You may say I don't want to hurt object-oriented programmers with functional C sharp, but I do. I'm sorry, it won't stop. The combination of functional and object-oriented programming is the future of C sharp. Get used to it. Still, C sharp has no native support for discriminated unions. Pity. I will now show you a place in code where a discriminated union fits better than any object-oriented modeling concept. You will witness how easy it will become to develop a complicated feature of a realistic ASP.NET Core application. By the time you finish watching this demo, you will be begging for discriminated union syntax in some future version of c -sharp. This is the demo application modeling a bookstore and this page is listing books. But I'm not satisfied with what I see here. Why is this not a link to books of this author? And this, why is it not a link to book details? But it's not easy to implement. Some books have multiple authors. And also here in the book details, this entire label is just one link at the time? I want fine-grained control here, link to the author, for example, and then the link to the book details as part of this label. You have seen the application and you have heard the requirements. I want all those elements to be links, individual links. Whenever we see a name of the author, I want that to be a link to books of that author. Whenever we see a title of the book, we want that to be a link to that book's details. Now, to the code. Problem is here, this is the view model. It is a string. You can't do anything with a string. It has no business behavior. This model is lacking expressiveness. Same thing in the page with book details. This is the see also section with a few books. And the same problem, the entire book is formatted as a single string. You can't do anything with that. You cannot break that into portions and turn them into links. The root cause of all these problems is in the formatter. This is the formatter which is formatting a book into a string using some strategy that is configured for every page in the site. We need a more expressive model here. There are two supporting formatters. Here, this is the abstract formatter of the list of authors because you can choose to separate them with commas to use some uh, more complicated uh, structure like academic uh, format. And inside the list of authors, you need to format every individual author's name. Will it be a full name? Will it be some short um, version like taking the the initial of the name and full, full surname, whatever. Now, what I wanted to point out is that we need something substantially better than the string here. So we need a new type. I will call it a citation segment. And every formatter will return citation segments here. We still don't know what these citation segments are, but we know that the citation of a book will consist of many of them. That is how we develop the domain model. We augment existing types like string and introduce more appropriate domain models for that. The verdict is every formatter will return a sequence of citation segments. And this completes this stage of, let's say, discovering the domain model. All concrete classes have gone red. I will have to fix every single class because I'm augmenting the model. And the ball is in this type's yard. There are a couple of ways to implement this feature. I will show you the one based on discriminated unions. A discriminated union is a type normally an abstract type, which comes with a finite set of subtypes that are known in advance and will not change in the future. That is quite different from inheritance. Even though it is always based on inheritance, it is substantially different. Inheritance, class inheritance, 
is about inheriting behavior. A discriminated union is specializing the abstract type into a finite set of concrete types. It is a semantical tool. The discriminated union will not inherit behavior. And since C Sharp has no support for discriminated unions yet, I will have to cope, for example, with records. Records are very close to discriminated unions. Actually, what C Sharp is lacking is the way to say that these classes I will inherit now are all the classes that can exist deriving from this base type. So the first step is to turn the base type abstract. You can use an interface here, but since this record already has a state, this uh, text representation of a citation segment, and every citation will have a text representation, I will work with records still. Now imagine a finite set of representations of the citation segment. A segment can be a book author. But unlike an abstract citation segment, this concrete segment, the book author segment, also has the author's ID. It is important because this segment will turn into an anchor tag in HTML that will point to books of this author by his or her ID. And the book author segment is a citation segment, so I will use inheritance with the name becoming the text representation of that segment. You see, I'm using class inheritance syntax here, but it's only a tool to support a discriminated union, in fact. And the last variant is the title of the book, which also includes the ID of that book. In the future, we might need other kinds of segments like publisher or publishing year or page number, depending on how this application will develop further. Adding more types to the discriminated union is the greatest enemy of discriminated unions. But lucky for us, majority of actual discriminated unions in practice are final the day you write them. And that is the greatest power of discriminated unions. Look at this file. What does it tell you? It says that the segment of any citation that you might see on the website is either an author, a plain text, or a book. And each with an additional information. ID of the book or ID of the author, for example. Now, all concrete classes are in red. I will have to visit every one of them and augment them to return citation segments and to calculate them properly. That will be a hefty piece of work. But now you may ask, where are the methods on these types? Well, that is the second part of uh, discriminated unions, and it is also part of uh, regular functional programming. You don't define functions or methods on the type itself. That is where type test and set expressions come to the table, an important part of uh, modern C sharp syntax. You would define an extension method that has one branch for each type in the union and implements behavior for each particular concrete type in the discriminated union. That is quite different from what we normally do with classes. And you will see why that is good when we continue implementing this example. Before that, let me ask you a favor. If you like this video so far, then please press the like button. That will help me. Thank you very much. And if you wish to see the source code of this demo, the source code is available to sponsors of this channel. So become a sponsor. Visit me at Patreon. There's a link in the description. Become the sponsor. Help me keep this channel free for everyone else. Thank you very much. Now let's continue developing this demo. I have completed the source code so that you don't have to watch every minute detail, but I will show you what I did. This is the academic author list format. Individual authors come 
formatted with their own formatter, then followed by comma or at all. Each element of this fairly complicated format is in its place. Every formatter here has its own logic and some of them are very complicated. But these are producing the objects that belong to the discriminated union. Now let's see the consumer, let's see how we use a sequence of uh, citation segment objects without knowing which one is which. This is the page model behind the list of books. Every row is now a citation of authors and a citation representing the title. Here is how the page model is populated. An appropriate formatter is applied to authors and also to the title, so we don't know what we have got in the end, it is just a sequence of citation segments, but this will knock you out. How do we render that? Look, there's a partial view used in every place where a sequence of citation segments appears in the view model. But now a serious question, if we do get into that partial view, how do we really, really consume the discriminated union? As I said, we don't define methods on a discriminated union. That would turn it into a class. We don't want to use it as a class inheritance hierarchy. We want to use them the way functional languages use them. And it is invariably through type test and set expressions. So look here, we are switching by the type of each individual citation segment object and acting differently in each of the three cases. This is Razor, that's why it's so cryptic, it also must produce HTML with no unintended gaps between elements of HTML, that makes it cryptic but it behaves differently based on every object's runtime type. For example, here's what it does when it encounters an outer segment. It captures a concrete outer segment type into an object, a reference to that derived type. And so it can map that segment into an anchor tag and watch this, to use the author's identity to complete the URL for that anchor tag. And also notice the style of these HTML elements. Here the style is calculated from the object's type. I'm using the runtime type of every segment to style it. Every type in the discriminated union has its own style. Book title, it is printed in italic. Plain text, text that is not the link, it is in dim color. An important element in this solution is that there is not a single if instruction implementing any logic regarding this discriminated union in this entire application. Not a single if instruction. The only branching is type test and set expression. And that is what you would see in any functional language. Pattern matching is the way to map a discriminated union into something else, whatever, HTML in this case. Let's try this out. The application is complete. Every name here is a link, look. And this text, it is not a link, it is plain text. Nice, the title is in italic, yes, and it is also a link. And if I follow the link to the author, these are the books by that author, so the links work fine. If I follow the link to the book, it will take me to the book details. And here, this label is also having a complicated structure, even though it, is, it, it looks like a single block of text. The name is still a separate link. This portion in between, that portion is still a plain text. And the rest is the title and that is again a link to the book. We have implemented a fairly complicated feature and all that backed by a simple discriminated union. Where did I implement the mapping, the method defined on the discriminated union? 
in the UI, precisely where it belongs. Now that is the critical difference between using discriminated unions and functional types in, the, in general compared to traditional object-oriented programming. In functional programming, including that on discriminated unions, you would define every function precisely where it belongs. Try to imagine developing this same feature using traditional object-oriented programming. That would be much more difficult. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, visit me at Patreon and become the sponsor, get uh, access to source code and read the source code of this entire application and enjoy functional programming with C Sharp. See you in the next demo.